I'm just gonna freaking read it myself because I don't have a physical book staring me in the face saying read me. I kind of hope I don't like this. It's a lot to commit to. Unless I hate the first book in which case. As you possibly, probably, maybe know, uh, my TBR videos are just books that I regard as an obligation. Like there's a buddy read for it, a read along for it, my patrons are making me read it. Um, but there are several books that I really want to prioritize this year and these are books that I don't actually have any like reason to be reading um, in an obligation sense. So I want to sort of like create accountability by doing this video where I'm saying no this is for sure a priority for me and to also let you guys know about them because they're not gonna at least right now, I can think of no reason why they would appear on a TBR video. So I just want to tell you about them and then you can keep me accountable for them. <laughs> the first book I have is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I bought this book when it came out. Like I might have pre-ordered it um, or if not, I, sh I definitely bought it like right when it came out and I have not read it yet. And now there's an adaptation of it, which I would very much like to watch, but I can't watch that adaptation until I freaking read this book that I've owned for forever. And this is historical fiction, not fantasy, and it just sounds very much up my alley. Blurbs aren't really ever to be trusted, but the first blurb says, had Charles Dickens and Bram Stoker come together to write the great Victorian novel, I wonder if it could have surpassed the Essex Serpent. It was also blurbed by Jesse Burton, the author of The Miniaturist, who said, here is a writer who understands life. It just sounds very moody and dark, it's historical fiction. It sounds mysterious, contemplative. These are all things that I very much gravitated towards. And I mean, full disclosure, I did buy this book for the cover. Uh, the adaptation of it looks really good too. So I would really like to make it a priority to read this book and then watch the adaptation. Next up, I have a book that this actually, this book isn't actually a priority, but it's the first book in a series that's a priority. And that is The Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I read The 100,000 Kingdoms a couple years ago now and then never finished The Inheritance Trilogy. And I really want to finish the Inheritance Trilogy. There's no reason for me not to have done so. And fortunately, this is a series where like, it is kind of like loosely connected rather than like a continuous story. So I might reread 100,000 Kingdoms, but I don't think that I would need to per se, because I believe the next two books while taking place in the same universe and being kind of connected to this book, they aren't like a direct sequel in the way that a series normally is. But in any event, I loved this. I loved, it was a favorite of the year, the year that I read it, and I love N.K. Jemisin. I don't know why I haven't finished this year. I mean, I know why, it's because it hasn't been an obligation, but I'm making it one now. Next up is a book that I have wanted to read for forever. I keep putting it on patron polls, hoping to like make it be an obligation and it never wins. I'm just gonna freaking read it myself. And that is The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep by H.G. Perry. I bought this like right after finishing The Shadow Histories um, by H.G. Perry. That is the Declaration of the Rights of Magicians and the Radical Act of Free Magic, which were favorites of the year for me when I read those in 2021. And then like, because I loved those so much, I wanted to see what else H.G. Perry had written and she hasn't written a ton. But the, this certainly stood out to me. This is a standalone. And I believe it's to do with like literary characters coming out of the books that they're in and causing havoc, which is a, a premise that could be really corny and cheesy. And I would be very dubious if it was written by anyone else, but she did so, like, she handled everything so well in the shadow history is that I have great faith that she'll have handled this premise as well. And because the title has Uriah Heep in it and given what the premise is supposed to be, I'm guessing that the character of Uriah Heep from David Copperfield will be at least among the characters that cause problems. And he's always been a interesting character. I'm very hopeful that this will be a new favorite as well. Next is a book that I've owned the audiobook for for years and years and years um, and now I bought a physical copy of it because it was really cheap and also because if I only own a digital copy of a book then I'm much less likely to read it because I just won't remember that I have it because I don't have a physical book staring me in the face saying read me. And that is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey which I believe is a name for a duo of authors one of which is Daniel Abraham which does not bode well. But this promises to be the science fiction equivalent of a Song of Ice and Fire. So not even sci-fi can escape being the next Game of Thrones. But in all seriousness, everyone always raves about this series. I have had the audiobook for forever and I feel like I would like this. Uh, maybe I won't, but the way people hype it, I have a lot of FOMO about it. I also would like to watch the TV show. I have actually seen a couple episodes of the TV show and I was like, nope, nope, I'm gonna read the book. Maybe then I'll watch the TV show. There's a lot of episodes though. And there's a lot of books. I kind of hope I don't like this. It's a lot to commit to. But anyway, I got the first three because they were quite cheaper on the holidays. So here's hoping I like them. Next up is a book that I really thought that I would have read in 2022. I'm kind of glad that I didn't read it in 2022 because uh, then it would be over. And that is Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. Once I finish this book, that's it for the Greenbone Saga. I have the Jade Setter of Jan Loon, but once I finish Jade Legacy, that's it for the Greenbone Saga. I won't have any more in this story. And this is also the kind of series where like it behooves one to not put too much time in between the books because there's so much like machinations and like stuff going on with the characters that you don't really want to forget that stuff. I loved Jade War and Jade City, favorites of the year for 2022. 
and everyone raves about Jade Legacy saying it's the best of the lot. And even if I don't end up feeling like it's the best of the three, I'm certain that I will very much enjoy it. So I definitely want to prioritize this because I want to read it because I don't want to forget stuff from Jade War before I read this. <laughs> the next two I'll do together because they're kind of the same goal. So um, in, in December I read um, La Belle Sauvage, which is the first book in the Book of Dust, kind of in anticipation of the, the read-along on my Patreon for His Dark Materials, which is a reread for me. I have read His Dark Materials before. So I'd, and I'd owned um, La Belle Sauvage for a long time and so I wanted to finally read it and I really really liked it and then I meant I was like gonna go on and, and read Secret Commonwealth which is the second book in the Book of Dust and then I was like oh that's right Secret Commonwealth takes place after His Dark Materials so I want to read his, The Secret Commonwealth but after we finish the read-along for His Dark Materials um, and then we're still waiting for book three of Book of Dust and then the other Philip Pullman book I have which I've also owned for a long time is Damon Voices um, which I didn't realize was non-fiction I thought this was just kind of like world of stuff for His Dark Materials it's actually non fiction and it's about Philip Pullman's approach to writing, approach to world building, things like that. And um, I've owned it for a long time but recently I saw a video essay where someone was talking about this book in particular and it even more so kind of like sparked interest in me where I was like oh I really should read that, that sounds great. So when, when we finish the read along for His Dark Materials I'll read The Secret Commonwealth and then Sometime this year, I would very much like to read Damon Voices. Uh, next up is a book that I can finally read, and that is Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. This is the first book in the Winnowing Flame trilogy. I didn't really want to start reading this until I had all three. Um, I've been getting these beautiful editions from the Broken Binding. Broken Binding. Not everyone, but a lot of people um, were affected by a like poor first printing of the third book in the series. So I've been waiting all this time to get the third book because I was like I don't want to start the series when I don't even have the whole series yet. So I got an email recently saying hey we finally have the reprint of the third book um, you know please confirm your address it's still the same as it was you know a million years ago. So that should be coming any minute now I actually do, I still don't have it but like I feel safe to like be putting this on my radar to read soon because I will shortly have the third book and I can read the whole trilogy unless I hate the first book in which case uh oh. I, I very much hope to like this. Um, these are beautiful editions and they're very hyped by Elliot Brooks. So I hope it lives up. <laughs> Next up is a book that one of my, I think one of my patrons very kindly sent to me. And that is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. This book got a lot of like hype last year. It was because it came out last year and it sounded really intriguing to me. That said, if it's too on the nose about the themes, I probably will hate it. So I feel like I'm either going to really, really love this or really, really hate this. There's not going to be any in between because the idea of it, the concept of it, sounds great to me, but if it's like done too ham-fistedly, then I will hate it. And it was blurbed by Bonnie Garmus, so the author of Lessons in Chemistry, one of my worst reads of last year, partly because her book is super on the nose, so that does not bode well. But bad authors blurb great books all the time. Hopefully it's fine. I would really like to read this though, and it's, it's despite the prevalence of purple, this is quite a pretty book, so I would like to like it. <laughs> Next is a book slash series that there isn't like any like, I've owned this forever or anything like that. I just want to read it. Um, and that's Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle or Mantel. I got a box set of all hardcovers of this trilogy. Is the trilogy called the Wolf Hall trilogy? I actually have no idea. But it's like set in like King Henry VIII era. And I hear nothing but praise for this series, like that this is how historical fiction should be written. And I love that era of history. I have always like watched documentaries about it and adaptations about people from that era. Shakespeare is like you know, directly after King Henry VIII. I've, I've heard excellent things about the books and about the adaptation. I haven't seen the adaptation. So I just really want to read it. And I have these stunning hardcovers of it now. And I'm just, I'm really vibing this. So I'm prioritizing it because I want to. The last book I have is a book that I kind of need to just should or get off the pot for. And that is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I got this book when it came out and I was really hyped for it because this cover I feel like is everything that a fantasy book should look like. It's this chonky, thick, ornately illustrated orange, which is a superior color book. And I got it and I was so hyped to read it and I started reading it and I just kind of like accidentally DNF'd it because I was like, ah, it's not as great as I expected or hoped. That's enough for now. We kind of set it aside and then just never continued. Whoops. And that was like in 2019, I think, when it came out. My bookmark is still in here from when I read it. I've been looking for this bookmark. I made it to page 148, which is not even the end of a chapter. It's in the middle of a chapter. Yeah, basically, I, I it's been sitting there on my shelf now this whole time, kind of, because I'm like, well, I didn't DNF it. I didn't, I didn't hate it. I would like to like it. Um, one of these days, I'll give it a proper go. Um, and then there's a new one coming out because this was supposed to be a standalone. And it's not clear to me if the new one is a sequel to a book that was originally supposed to be a standalone 
or if it's like in the same world as or whatever, but it is also stunning. But I'm not gonna get that book unless I like this one. So I need to finally freaking read this book so I can decide if I like it or not. And if I don't like it, then I'm not buying that stunning new one that is the follow-up to this. I really hope I like you. I don't think I will though. But you're so beautiful. I've also heard the audiobook for it is pretty terrible. So maybe I'll just read like a chapter a day for the whole year. I don't know, but I, I need to figure this out. <laughs> Those are all the books that I am prioritizing in 2023. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about these books. If you've read them, if you haven't read them, if you plan to read them, if you would like to encourage me to definitely prioritize these, or like if you want to be like, no, don't read that. <laughs> Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.